and uh, welcome back to our panelists and of course uh, to colleagues uh, in the media industry. Uh, so um, three major issues that I came across. The first one was the issue of uh, safety nets uh, for journalists and the media industry itself and also the role of economy uh, within the media industry. There was also the issue of the arrests of journalists and uh, there was a lot of talk around uh, as well the welfare of journalists themselves. The economy and media, that relationship, has it been understood and how does it stand at the moment? I, I don't think it has been understood a lot. I was, I was just remarking during the break that Zimbabwe's uh, GDP is currently, what, estimated at 25 billion, right? What is the contribution of the media? What is the media size of GDP? A tiny segment. And why is that so? And does it relate? If you look at South Africa, how big is the media and how functional is it within the GDP? Way, way bigger than us. I think, I think again, I want to repeat my point and, and emphasize that it is about the story. If you are telling a story that drive growth, that drive development, for me, it is only normal that business will fall. For instance, we have a station, a commercial station, and we had to position ourselves. Well, I come from the Great Dyke, Rishavani, and we said our mission and our vision is to see a developed and empowered Great Dyke community. And make no apologies about that. Because I know that when people are waking up every morning, they want growth. They want development. And I've said, in whatever you do, guys, make no apologies. A story is only important in so far as it benefits its listener, its viewer, and the like. When it destroys its viewer, I don't make money. Mr. Gandhari, is that the ministry's view? Just to give, you know, a sort of um, forest view. Mm -hmm. So at the UN, they said they are SDGs, right? And so the expectation is that stories will be written around the sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. you, you, you come to us, we said the story, vision 2030, towards an upper middle income economy. Who doesn't like that? Okay? We all like that. And we went further. National Development Strategy 1. Okay? What we are trying to do is to give you the area to play around. We are not telling you what to write, but we are saying this is where we want to go. These are the stories that we are expecting. And earlier I said, you are our development partners. We expect to read we, what is going on in, um, in, you know, in, in the communities, what the grassroots are doing to respond to government interventions. And it answers the issues that he was speaking to. The issues of, uh, someone said uh, the, the media industry is getting broke and, and the, uh, the space is closing. It's because you're not we are not connecting. If you write about people's um, everyday stories and how does those things are matching with uh, the, you know, the development of the government, you'll get people who want to be part of you. Okay? Yep. But we're not getting that. There, there's an issue that, that, that uh, was raised earlier here about arrest of journalists. Very complex issue. Let me put a disclaimer before I go into that. That we are, as the Minister of Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Services, not responsible for arrests. It's another arm of government. What we do, as far as the safety of journalists, and what we have done, just to give a practical example, mm -hmm. when we were informed that there were journalists arrested, we then communi communicated with the appropriate arm of government to expedite the release of the journalists. That's what we can do. But I said this is complex. There are instances where the journalists themselves might be up for criminal you know, cases. It becomes difficult for us to say release them because there are investigations that want to be done. You know, the good thing about the freedom of the press is that it gives responsibility to the government and also to the journalists. Not to be careless, not to be reckless, but to act responsibly. 
What we're looking at is quality information, is ethical, professional way of conducting their business. If they are within that, I think that's the backdrop of journalism, the ethics, the tenets of how to do it. If they are within that, as a ministry, we will spring to action to be on the side of the journalists. Just to give you a small statistic, uh, Butler, the environment, the media environment has evolved. It has changed for the better. Um, I was looking at data just this week of number of journalists coming to cover events and uh, other issues in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. from outside. Yes. 51% of the journalists who came in the first quarter of this year came from Europe. 22% were from Africa, and the other percentage is Asia. So what that, does that tell you? The environment is becoming more conducive even for journalists who are from outside to come and do business. And we are opening it up even for our local journalists. But let's all be responsible so that it's easier for all of us. How do we now define a journalist and how do we define an activist? Last year, we gave every journalist who wanted to cover the, the in 2020, 2018, who wanted to cover our elections, uh, a press jacket to protect them so that they'll be distinguished from uh, uh, other people uh, uh -huh. in the crowd. That's one, one simple thing that can be done. But um, a, in terms of legislation, we argued vociferously during all the consultations from 2017 until the time that the ZMC bill came out that we want the industry itself to take responsibility first and foremost. Why is that important? It is important because right now I'll tell you here is a report from the committee uh, to protect journalists in the U.S. based in the U.S. Uh, reporting that 400 attacks uh, there were 400 attacks in one month in the U.S. on journalists. And then you have a situation where Twitter had to twist, switch off the former president of the United States from, they had to switch off his account. Now, what that means when you read these stories is that uh, it's a problem for the industry itself because activism and journalism have been m mixed up. It is a problem that is way beyond the commission alone. We actually have to fall back on the, on the industry to say, you as an industry, how do you define your, your, your media practitioners? And, 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 and because we, we have had several cases in Zimbabwe where a so-called journalist will use a ZMC card um, and join a demonstration and they are burning tires and when they are arrested, that's when they bring out their card. So our first solution was that you must always distinguish yourself from the activists. You are a journalist. So we give you a jacket to identify yourself. Uh, so in a situation like what you said about the uh, city hall, city council, we, 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 we don't know and we could not jump to a conclusion right away. We would need the employers of those journalists to say, were these people on your assignment to go and cover a story? Or were they doing something else during the weekend or over? And, and even during, during the, 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 uh, the, the COVID-19 lockdown, we also had instances where someone was drinking in a beer, in a beer hall, which is legal according to the regulations, but then the, after they are arrested, they bring out the card and say, by the way, I was doing journalism. <laughs> but this is an illegal an illegal operation because the, the, the law says you should not open bars because you, you risk lives. Mm -hmm. So th that, that is a very complex situation which in which we needed the cooperation of the industry itself to define its workers and to, to, to regulate its workers and even to, to, to design a uh, cause of ethics. The media industry itself has been given the freedom to regulate itself. Uh, as media commission, the onus is on us as players within the media industry to take responsibility and be accountable for the story as well as for the regulations, the ordinances that, that we are going to craft and put together so that uh, we create an environment that 
we are all accountable for that is transparent and that we all help you know to nurture so that it it, it flourishes at the end of the day if the media peddles stories that antagonize Zimbabwe, for instance, there's no way by which you're going to have investors. So we, uh, polarization begins with the media. Polarization begins in the you know, media industry. So we need to, to tread you know, with care, with caution, knowing fully well that uh, Ndambupa example, Yekuti, is a... As, as, as somebody running in a, in a relay, ndika pua chibaton, no vanda macha na chondinu, and I forget that there's the next player. We should actually receive that button. Oh, manya, on the the next person. That's how we get to win, and that's how we get to tame, you know, the environment and make it work and profitable for all of us as players within this relay. We 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 find ourselves much more playing the watchdog role, and uh, not so much embracing uh, the economic role to be part players of the economy. It's 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 not. Um, if you take it as oh, okay, these people are talking bad about me, then you'll always have problems. But if we take it the way it is supposed to be, a watchdog role, where then things are fixed, that means it's going to have repercussions on the economy, right? It means that then those things that are making the economy not work well will then be able to work well because you have um, you know, highlighted certain things. I do understand where you're coming from in terms of uh, personal attacks, where you know, it's, it's no longer about uh, being a watchdog, but it's more of a, a critique on a person's character, as an example. But where media uh, is, is supposed to be uh, working towards um, you know, highlighting things that need to be fixed, and then they are fixed because the fixer is not looking at it as criticism uh, or, or as an attack but looking at it from a perspective where they're saying, it means that I must do something about this. Then the self-regulation, I do, uh, it, it's very difficult, as it were, but I think the problem is that we don't have systems in place that will then help us to self-regulate. I, 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 I understand the, the role of uh, the Voluntary Media Council of Zimbabwe as an example, but if a person has, um, who is not you know, a, a member of uh, the council or a person who does not believe that they've, uh, uh, the, this council is a, a bearing on me. I'm just, I'm a journalist and I want to be a journalist. It means then we'll not be able to hold them accountable. We can only hold those who are accountable, people who are, for example, accredited with ZMC. Those are the only ones that we can hold accountable, but there should be real replications for people who peddle outright lies. Many times we've had instances where even our journalists have been arrested and you realize that uh, the action that he had taken in order to obtain the story was not just unethical, but was illegal. The question then speaks to the issue of journalists being aware or conscious of the laws that exist in their operating environment. Do they really know these laws? I was talking to Mike earlier on and say the fact that you don't find a lot of journalists, for example, being arrested in Britain does not mean that there is a lot of um, um, uh, media space uh, or freedom uh, in, in Britain. It, it might also mean that uh, they are conscious and are aware of the laws that govern their operation and they are dead to those laws. Mm -hmm. I also need to move on to, to a, a subject that uh, I think um, academics like uh, Dr. Maosto must uh, think around. The scholarship on journalism is Eurocentered. <laughs> This idea of watchdog and so forth. Let's have a nuanced narrative and develop our own scholarship based on our own experience. We can't continue having the scholarship which is Western oriented. For example, you find a person who thinks that he can make a livelihood on damning his country. And you make money. There's lots of money in just attacking Zimbabwe. Lots of money. And he claims to be a journalist. Isn't it? So I think we need to develop our own scholarship on journalism. Students who are coming to, to the newsroom must be aware. We want press freedom. We want to celebrate uh, press freedom. But there is no press freedom without responsibility. What we are being taught in journalism school, for us as, as a broadcasters at BC, we are told that our mandate is to inform, educate, and entertain. And you say to yourself, where did this come from? You read and find that it was coined by John Reith in 1954 for BBC, the British people. 
How do we not have a definition of public service broadcasting that speaks to us as a people, where we are coming from, where we are going to, and what we want to achieve? Uh, that's the issue of scholarship that he was talking about. And also, the professor talked about uh, should we as journalists say things that undermine our national interest? Um, Anna again was being idealistic about these things, but I will uh, <laughs> bring up the example that uh, Dr. Mahoso. When Trump was behaving in a manner that undermined America's place in the world, he was taken off air. Twitter shut him down, Facebook shut him down, and all the networks were not covering him. Journalism and national interest. Give me your thoughts. You, as what others have said, can win your accolades for writing a story that you export, which um, is malicious, which, um, which maligns Zimbabwe. But that does not take you far. Lies have got short legs. <laughs> Not until you understand that Zimbabwe is home, east-west home is best, and the things that we are putting in place are for you and the future, and that the story at the moment in Zimbabwe is how do we grow this country, how do we move into an upper-middle income economy, which I think anyone who is uh, reasonable, Will, ask, will be desirous of. That's the, the dream. That's where we want to, to go. And this is what we are asking our partners in development. This is the national interest to grow this country into an upper middle income economy.